The number two scapegoat is China. And here you should understand also American political history. There are still many people who don't understand that the Cold War with the USSR is over. They still think of socialism and communism as frightening, foreign, evil phenomena. They do. And so because... China is led by a communist party. It's very easy politically in the United States to say that China is an enemy. Uh, the real issue is the competition. Americans are now dealing with the fact that the Chinese produce the highest quality electric vehicle at the lowest price. Most Americans believe that the economic competition coming from China is intended to displace the dominant position of the world so that it's no longer American, it becomes Chinese. It's an evil plot to rule the world. This is how it is explained. And all kinds of people, including significant numbers of intellectuals, believe this. They actually, they don't know much about China. They don't know much about the history. They they barely understand what happened in 1949 and, and the Civil War and the defeat of Chiang Kai-shek and all of it. They don't know much of that. Their understanding is that China is the evil doer. So, for example, they like to be told that the Chinese stole the technology from the West. The idea that American corporations exchanged technology for cheap labor and market access, which is what happened, they don't want that. that because that says that the corporations, with the support of the government, went to China, which is what happened. But they don't want that story. They want to be able to blame the Chinese. You could see it with, with President Trump. This is the first of For the four many. years of his presidency, one, he explained the that the tariffs were a punishment of the misbehavior of the Chinese. And he told the American people the Chinese would have to pay those tariffs. But of course, as a professor of economics, I had to explain to my students the tariffs are not paid by the Chinese. They're paid by Americans when they import. It's a tax called a tariff put on you by the American government. My students looked at me. They understood what I was telling them. But they had a really hard time because their president was telling them that the evil bad Chinese are being punished because this story is very important so that the anger built up by 40 years of neoliberal globalization is focused on the Chinese and on immigrants. And the corporate leaders of America like that because they don't want to be the ones that get blamed. They don't. And so it's very helpful to them to blame immigrants and to blame the Chinese, even though they don't want to lose the Chinese connection. That issue, that's the issue here in the United States. Will we develop a political force that can successfully explain to the American working class what their problem is? Or will we continue to be governed by a Republican Party that blames immigrants more than Chinese and a Democratic Party that blames Chinese more than immigrants. But both of them are perfectly happy to scapegoat both of them. And the Democrats add Russia and the Republicans a little less on Russia, a little more on China. But don't be fooled by the details. And if you understand that, you won't be confused by the bizarre statements our politicians make or the th political theater that they put on display. The reality is 
American capitalism is no longer the dominant capitalism in the world. It has to face that. The whole rest of the world is adjusting to that fact. China has to make a huge decision. The British Empire is over. The American Empire is declining. Will we now see a Chinese empire? Or, or, will the Chinese be new and different in world history and say, no more empires? Not Britain, not Rome, not, you know, not Greece, not the United States, and not China. When Xi Jinping says, I want to create a multipolar world, this opens a whole new possibility. Remember, in the 20th century, the West tried the League of Nations. After World War II, the world tried the United Nations, but they did not succeed. The question is, might the Chinese lead the world into a genuinely multipolar world? I personally, I hope so.